Documents only recently available prove there was such a plan. Here at the U.S. National Archives and at government agencies throughout Washington are stored hundreds of thousands of documents concerning the atrocities committed before and during World War II. Many of these documents grew out of U.S. efforts to prosecute Nazis, but some tell of efforts to actually recruit them. ABC News has learned of one high-level intelligence program that not only allowed war criminals into this country, but did so with the official sanction of our government. Correspondent Michael Connor investigated the details of that program. It was called Project Paperclip, and from the end of World War II to the mid-1950s, it brought more than 900 German scientists to the United States. Classified government documents describe how the Joint Chiefs of Staff administered the program for the American military and the Departments of State and Commerce. Paperclip's goal was to recruit and exploit the best of German brain power for use by both the military and American business. Officially, Paperclip barred active Nazis, but screening procedures were lax and in some cases negligent. Two separate cases illustrate the point. The first is the case of Otto Ambrose, shown here on trial at Nuremberg. Ambrose was a chemist and a director of the notorious IG Farben Chemical Company, which supplied gasoline and rubber for Hitler's war effort. Ambrose is credited with developing a form of synthetic rubber called Buna, and he played a supervisory role in the construction of Farben's Buna plant in the Polish village of Auschwitz. For IG Farben, Auschwitz concentration camp inmates provided a plentiful source of cheap labor. One survivor of the Farben plant is author Elie Wiesel. Those who could work, worked. Those who could not were killed. Work was actually a slow process of death. No food, no rest, only work. The overseers were couples, the SS, but also civilians. I was in touch constantly with German civilians who were meisters. They were in, in charge of the work projects. I was very young. I remember those days because probably uh, more often than not, I wonder how did I manage to, to do that much work, to carry stones that were heavier than, than I was. And The Nuremberg prosecution charged that each day at Farben's plant, 100 people died from sheer exhaustion. For his role there, Otto Ambrose was convicted of slavery and mass murder and sentenced to eight years in prison. But even while on trial at Nuremberg, Ambrose was a target for United States government recruiters from Project Paperclip. As a convicted war criminal, he could not officially join the program. But Ambrose, American government, and American business cooperated in other ways. His prison sentence was commuted after only three years by American officials. And he was helped in a bid to enter the United States by this man, J. Peter Grace, president of W.R. Grace, a major American chemical company. This copy of an internal State Department document describes how J. Peter Grace helped Otto Ambrose in his efforts to enter the United States. In a memorandum to the United States Ambassador to Germany, Grace acknowledges that Ambrose was a war criminal. But he adds that in the years he's known Ambrose, and I quote here, we have developed a very deep admiration, not only for his ability, but more important, for his character, in terms of truthfulness and integrity. It's not clear precisely what effect this memo had. All we know is that on three occasions, in 1968, 1969, and 1971, the United States State Department waived regulations which should have barred Ambrose from entering the country. And in each of those years, it granted him a special visitor's visa. Why Ambrose was given special treatment is unclear. Both the State Department and J. Peter Grace refused to be interviewed for this broadcast. However, Grace officials confirmed a business relationship between their corporation and Ambrose. 
Today, Otto Ambrose does consulting work for W.R. Grace and Company and lives here in Mannheim, Germany. Ambrose wouldn't agree to a film interview with ABC News. But in a recent telephone conversation, he told me that following his conviction at Nuremberg, he was contacted by American military and scientific personnel. An army of people came and asked me about my work, he said. I told them all about it. In addition, he told me, only months ago, United States government energy researchers came here to inquire about other aspects of his wartime research. I'm happy to still be working as a chemist, Ambrose told me, but it's funny. Now I'm helping the Americans. A man, a man whose faith in America has reflected and restored our own. Now, a man whose unswerving defense of the rights of the unborn has reminded all of the essential dignity and sanctity of life itself. And we were talking about it. Since pictures speak much louder than words, and to commemorate this very special occasion, we have prepared a five-minute visual tribute to our honoree, which we would like to show to you at this time. Now, we're going to have a video. To Ethiopia, I want to say thank you for all the love and care you have given to our poor through your gift of food. Each time I have knocked at your heart for help, you are always full support. My gratitude and that of our poor peoples is our prayer for you, that through this love you have for others, you may grow in holiness. I am sure you will thank God with us for the two tabernacles we have given to Jesus in Moscow and in Armenia. I always feel God uses us on nothingness to show his greatness. So pray for us that we not spoil God's work, but that we may continue with great love let us pray. God bless you, Mother Teresa. <laughs> Made that extraordinary film on Mother Teresa. I'm sure you've seen it, Mr. President. It was shown in the White House that so many of us have seen to take <clears throat> mothers the warm clothing that she and her sister companion would need. When I checked with Jan last week, when she returned from Russia, where she stayed about two and a half weeks with mother, I asked, because Jan didn't volunteer it, she wasn't very generous to me, how did Mother Teresa like her warm clothing? Jan told me Mother Teresa loved all the warm clothes uh, inside a monastery all the time, and they devote their entire lives to prayer and the service to God. And Mr. President, as you know, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Now, the scroll says that you and Mrs. Reagan will enjoy the benefit of the monks' prayers day after day through your lives and forever. Prayers that you will both be with our Lord forever. And that's where we want you to be when the time comes, with our Lord forever. <laughs> 